I could put together a few chords and I can put together lyrics. Why the fuck can't I make a song? Have you seen what it's like at the razor's edge? The part of you that needed love, you had to kill, you had to make it pay, but it keeps slipping through the cracks. You cannot fill the shadow. You know, kids have kitty taste in music unless they're really um, precocious. And I don't think I was. I mean, I had Sugar Sugar, you know, by the Archies, you know, it's real, real bubblegum stuff. Uh, chewy Chewy, the Ohio Express. You know, like songs that were made to get into little kids' heads, I was not immune to. I'm sure I listened to a lot of Puff the Magic Dragon when I was a kid, so I can say absolutely nothing about novelty hits. <laughs> that reminds me um, that that I, when I was very very young, I did listen to a lot of folk, uh, and Puff the Magic Dragon was an important song for me. Puff the Magic Dragon, live by the sea. You know, I wouldn't say that that's a bubblegum song at all. That's a very deep song. Sugar Sugar is literally a bubblegum song. Uh, but Puff the Magic Dragon is about the end of childhood, and it's devastating, still devastating. Listen to it later today, and I dare you not to be moved by the fact that he has to leave his dragon behind. I kind of got into, like, uh, yes. In high school, I think I was smoking some pot, and um, that was a good place to be to listen to those 20-minute song sides. Uh, so I, I was listening to Yes Songs, which was a live, triple live album. I remember buying that because that was a real expenditure. But I thought, okay, I could get all the songs, you know, on one album. Yeah. And uh, Tales from Topographic Oceans and being high and just looking at the artwork. I think his name is Roger Dean, the artist who did the uh, the covers. And they're very interesting to to a stoned kind of consciousness. <laughs> you know, you can really just spend a lot of time getting lost in them. I've heard there was the secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. Well, I should, we should never speak about Hallelujah because Leonard wanted that one to be retired. <laughs> I was attracted to Leonard Cohen um, music in, in the same way I love Bob Dylan or Lou Reed. I knew I knew where I was coming from, you know, with my voice. So I was looking at these guys as leaning heavily on lyrics and. Um, inhabiting the songs with a point of view yeah, and, and kind of struggling against uh, a lack of range. Knowing your limits is a very good thing. Uh, you know, we live in a world that tells you you have no limits and uh, sadly there's, it's a lie. We tell each other. <laughs> Yeah, the White Album was a big album for me. I I was old enough to buy that. Where did you get? Where did you buy it from? Free Being, Free Being Records. I grew up in on the Lower East Side, so it was very very hippie. You can't get more '60s than that as a as a record store. I met Ringo on a plane. Um, what did Ringo say to you on the plane then? Just a piece. Uh, that's what he says. <laughs> I just remember uh, he was sitting like two seats in front of me and he kind of had his head against the window. And I just kept on like looking at the back of his head thinking that's Ringo's head. It's just like, it was just weird for me because I know people react to me in a certain way sometimes. And it was, it was kind of 
it's comforting to me that Ringo was there. <laughs> Maybe, baby, when I'm older, what do you think I see? If I could walk away from me. Well, I've been reading this uh, biography of Lou Reed that just came out, and um, I mean, I knew that he had worked with, um, I think the person goes by the name Ann Honey now, whose voice is miraculous to me. And um, they did a version of Candy Says. So I I looked that up yesterday, and that's the last song that moved me. It was I found it, you know, those two voices couldn't be more different. You know, you have Lou kind of spoken singing, and then you have this, like, voice that transcends sex in a way you know you, you don't you don't know if it's male or female mm -hmm. uh, which i find haunting and beautiful and hopeful why hopeful what what makes it what makes you feel hope about it i think i used that word just now because it was it, it was non-specific in in terms of male female whatever it was human it was just transcendently human. I find that idea hopeful. 